But for more on this, we are joined by Sinan Jidda, the Executive Director of the Institute of Turkish Studies and a visiting professor at Georgetown University. He's joining us live from Washington, D.C. Mr. Jidda, very good to have you with us on Al Jazeera. So let's talk more about the government's response, what the government's response to this uh, attempted coup has been. This was a military coup. Why are we seeing so many uh, civil servants being fired? 21,000 teachers have had their licenses revoked, 15,000 employees from the Ministry of Education alone. How would you characterize this reaction from the Turkish government? Well, what we're seeing is what I would term to be the imposition and uh, rolling out of uh, a full-blown civilian coup. Even during the last coup in 1980, we've never seen so many individuals uh, discharged from their positions of, of, of employment, particularly from the civil service. What you're seeing is a very hypersensitive and hyper-paranoid government, uh, which is taking a blanket policy of weeding out large swaths of the bureaucracy to base and replace those individuals probably in the future with people and individuals who can be trusted to take those positions. Right now, uh, they do not necessarily know who is pro or against the government necessarily in all walks of uh, the civil service, but why take a chance? They seem to be implementing a blanket policy and basically discharging everybody so they can be replaced with their own um, uh, with their own choice of people. So they're not just then rounding up those who might be responsible for the coup uh, Gulenists, you know, that follow Fethullah Gulen. Is this then casting a much wider net, cracking down on all stripes of political opposition? Is that, if so, is that justified and can they get away with it? Um, your second question, I don't think it's justified. I think Turkey is in a very precarious situation. Um, we are, what, we, what we are witnessing is the implosion of the Middle East's just about only procedural democracy. And this should concern everybody, not just regionally, but globally as well. Um, Turkey is a NATO country on the, on the eastern edge of its flank. Its stability and political continuity and democratic credentials is vital for mm. the projection of um, security policies in the entire region. So the fact that these policies are being implemented is weakening Turkey's system of government. And ultimately, I don't think this is going to bode well or end well. Um, over 50,000 people have either been directly displaced or dismissed from their positions of employment, mainly because the incumbent regime right now feels entitled to do whatever it feels to strengthen Tayyip Erdogan's regime. And that, for now, means actually getting rid of people so that they can be replaced with loyalists. Um, you know, positions of authority in universities, um, people being discharged from, their, from judicial appointments. This doesn't look like, appear to, or appear to be, people directly being involved mm. with a coup, this being uh, let go of their positions. It looks like pre-prepared lists of individuals whom the government or whom the regime has suspected of being anti-Erdogan or anti-Justice and Development Party and now seems to be a perfect opportunity whereby these people will be displaced. The thing to watch out for is tomorrow where the country's National Security Council will be chaired by Erdogan. One of the expectations or I should say possible expectations is that uh, extraordinary rule or in other terms um, martial law might be implemented across the entire country and therefore deepening the, 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 the sort of government uh, uh, forced uh, evacuation of civil service positions, if not more. You say people you know, everywhere should be concerned. If it goes so far as martial law being imposed, can Turkey's uh, allies in, in Europe, can the United States actually do anything to stop what is looking like the erosion of democracy in Turkey? Um, you know, in the past, the European Union, of which Turkey is a candidate uh, country seeking full accession, um, and to a lesser extent, the United States had a considerable amount of leverage in terms of getting Turkey to abide by democratic standards. Right now, what we are witnessing is the lowest point in between uh, Turkish EU and Turkish US relations, where the amount of leverage that can be exacted by these two Western entities it is, is at its lowest point. The United States needs Turkey. Uh, to continue to operate out of its um, Injilic air base in the southeast and to prosecute the war against the Islamic State. And the European Union requires Turkey's cooperation uh, for refugee flows or the prevention of refugee flows into Europe. So um, 
President Erdogan has already basically said um, on numerous occasions that uh, he will basically do what is in Turkey's interests. That should probably be read in terms of what his own interests are. And if the EU and the US is not going to cooperate with him, then we don't know what he will exactly do. But the amount of leverage that the two Western entities has over Erdogan and Turkey is at its lowest point. And Erdogan, of course, has a lot of leverage over uh, the European Union and the United States at this stage. Sinan Jidda, executive director of the Institute of Turkish Studies, joining us from Washington, D.C. Really good to get your thoughts. Thank you for your time. Thank you.